All right, this problem is done by request. This is the 2011 Amy one problem number nine. I do intend to go back later and do the earlier problems, but I'm just getting these ones out of the way because they were requested. Okay, so suppose X is in the interval zero to pi over two. As you read, mentally translate first quadrant. So it's in the first quadrant and the log base 24 sine of x of 24 cos of x equals 3 over 2. Find 24 cotangent squared of x. We're going to cover two endings to this problem. Um, there's a, a variety of ways you can approach this, both in the beginning and the end. Uh, the way that I typically approach a log problem uh, is just try to throw standard rules at it first. So log base a of b equals x. If this is true, then it's what I, the transformation into exponential form uh, is what I call smiley frog face. And I call it that because you start at the A and as you're going, because you started at the A, you're gonna write A. And you're gonna come over and hit the X and that as you hit it with the arrow, that's the exponent. Now you don't, this is just a method of converting so you can remember how to do it. If you're doing these kinds of problems, you're probably pretty good at converting. I'm just explaining how I do it. So then equals B. And as you hit the equals and the B, that's what you write. The order in which you touch the letters is the order in which you write them. And it works the same in reverse. Log base A, you started at the A of B equals X, right? And it, to me, I had a, a stuffed animal as a kid that was a giant frog and like a giant one, you get it at the fairgrounds, and it had two big eyes. And so this, it just smiles. It looks like this smiley frog face. That's why I call it. So it's just a method of converting. So we're gonna use that here and just apply it directly. This to this power equals this. So 24 sine of x to the three over two power is equal to 24 cos of x. Now immediately, I don't want a square root. So I'm just gonna square both sides. After you square both sides, you're gonna get 24 cubed sine cubed of x equals 24 squared cosine squared of x. Next up, we don't want 24 cubed. Another principle of problem solving in general is never calculate anything until you have to. And we don't have to calculate this right away, so don't. It's pretty obvious on this one that you shouldn't, but just the same, it's worth mentioning. Divide both sides by 24 squared, and now you'll have 24 sine cubed of x. Go ahead and, it's gonna cancel here, Go ahead and make this one minus sine squared of x using the Pythagorean identities. And after you're done with that, move them to the other side. So I'm gonna move them now. So I'm gonna get plus sine squared of x minus one is equal to zero. All right, now we have a kind of a polynomial in sine of x. If we let u equal sine of x, it will say 24u cubed plus u squared minus one equals zero. Uh, it's not gonna be easy to factor something like that, or maybe it is. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't see it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try just doing um, synthetic. Um, to do synthetic, it's gonna rely on a principle uh, you learn in pre-calculus typically, also the end of algebra two, if you learn in the States. Um, that is that the, any possible rational root, it's called the rational root theorem if you wanna look it up, any possible rational roots have to be a factor of the constant over the leading coefficient, the factors of the leading coefficient. So it could be any, it's plus or minus one over any of the factors of 24. That's 24, uh, 12, eight, six, uh, four, three, two, and one. Six times four, eight, three, yeah, that's it. Okay, so it's any of these possibilities. However, we know that u is sine of x, and back to the beginning, we know it's in the first quadrant. So it must be positive, because all trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. Therefore, we can disregard the negative we normally have to include for rational root theorem. Um, it's not gonna be one, you can just plug in one and see it's not gonna work. Your goal when you're plugging in is to get a zero, and obviously 24 plus one minus one is not zero. So we'll start with one over two and synthetic. Don't forget, when you're doing synthetic, you write the coefficients of the polynomial, you have to put zero placeholders in for any that don't have a value. 
So for example, u squared has a coefficient of one, but u to the first doesn't have a value, so you have to put a zero to hold that place, and then negative one for the constant. Uh, you drop 24 down, cut it in half to get 12. If you haven't, don't know this process, I'm not going to explain synthetic right now. Look up a video on synthetic uh, division or synthetic substitution to see how it works. Um, half times 24 is 12. Add this to get 13. It's not going to work. Again, the goal with synthetic is to get a zero in this final spot, and multiplying by halves from here on out is never going to give me a zero there. So we'll try it again with one-third. And you're just marching along through the numbers. I'd like to try the easier ones first. So uh, this was 24, 1, 0, and negative 1. Um, we will now drop the 24 down times 1 third is 8. Already it's looking better because this is 9, a multiple of 3. And when I multiply, I get 3, and that's it. It worked out, right? We got 0. And so you can treat this as the root. It would then be u minus 1 third times over here uh 24 uh u squared oh these are the remaining coefficients of after you do the division if you don't know how it works uh plus 9u plus 3 times this u minus one third equals zero um now there's a couple things you can do here uh number one you could factor a three out of this and multiply it into that sometimes you'll do that kind of stuff in pre-cal it's totally not necessary right now but sometimes you do that um, this we're just going to check to see if the roots are even possible. And if I do b squared minus 4ac, which is the inside of the quadratic uh, formula, I will get b squared is 81 minus 4 times 24 times 3. Neither of them are negative. This equals something negative. And as long as the inside part of the square root on the quadratic formula is negative, the roots are imaginary. This is the discriminant. Okay, so if the discriminant is negative, you get imaginary roots. So we know that the roots from this are going to be imaginary. They don't even exist. It must be that u sine of x is equal to u is equal to one-third. It is positive, so we're good in the first quadrant. Now, what we're looking for now is this. And this is the two endings I was talking about. There's two ways we can continue this process. Uh, probably a standard approach would be to uh, square this to get sine squared of x equals one ninth, and cosine squared of x is equal to one minus sine squared of x, as we pointed out earlier. So one minus one ninth cosine squared of x equals uh, eight ninths. Then cotangent is cosine over sine, and cotangent squared is cosine squared over sine squared. So 8 ninth over 1 ninth, the ninths are going to cancel, you get 8, and 24 times 8, 8 times 20 is 160, plus 32 is 192, which is the answer. Uh, the alternative ending that we could have, we could have said uh, cotangent squared has a trig identity as well. It's uh, cotangent squared of x plus 1 uh, equals... Uh, cosecant squared of x, which is 1 over sine, 1 over sine squared. And so I can do cotangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x minus 1, and since cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, I could have just, or yeah, I could just reciprocal this and get 9, and 9 minus 1 is 8. Take that, replace cotangent squared with 8, you're right back in this position. It's one of the fun things about trig is there's many different paths to get to the answer. All right, hope it helps.